Hi, I'm Tanya Hill. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to go over the tools that you need to screen print so that you can set up and be ready to go. The first thing I want to talk about is the screens. Um, there are all sizes of screens. You can get from an 8x10 going up to quite large. It's according to what you want to screen print with. Um, the screen that I'm using here is a 10x14, and when I say 10x14, it's not the outside frame. It's the actual screen in the inside. Now, one of the reasons I like the speedball screens is because when you turn them over, you can actually take the screen out and replace the screen so that you don't have to buy the frame and everything again. You can just buy replaceable screens. The other thing is, is that once you've done your images, you can keep them that way. Just put them in a nice flat envelope and you can keep them and then you can replace it and print it again if you wish. So the screens uh, in the olden days, they were pure silk. Nowadays they're not. It's a different mesh. You have different uh, levels of mesh in the screen, which actually means how many holes you can see in the screen. The finer the screen, the deeper the detail, and that type of thing. This is a pretty much a standard screen that I'm looking at here. Um, you need your screens, and then you also need um, your squeegees. And there's uh, two different types of squeegees. You can get them in all sizes, shapes, plastic, wood, whatever. But there's two major things to know about screens, and I mean squeegees, and that is the shapes of them. A flat squeegee like this, straight, square, flat squeegee, is for graphics or paper or wood, that type of thing that you would want to print because you're going to pull it in. You're just going to pull it, and it's going to lay on the surface of the product. Then there's a rounded edge, and it's, you can see this, it's just a little rounded edge. And this is used for fabric because you're actually pushing the inks down into the fabric. So you have a fabric squeegee. Now, if you don't have, um, if you can only afford one squeegee and you can't, you know, you can't afford two, you can use either one for either process, but it just makes it easier, especially with the fabric one, if you have the round one, if you're doing a lot with fabric, it, it really does help. But you can use a graphic squeegee on fabric if you need to. Um, other than that, there are different methods that we will go through, which has different tools that you need. For instance, if we were going to do um, just the stencil method, all we would need is a screen, a stencil, what paper we wanted to print it on, and the inks. Now there's all types of inks and there's all colors of inks and so forth you can get. In the screen printing inks there are acrylic inks which are used for wood or for uh, permanent type things. You could even screen print for outside use. It's the same as if you were using acrylic paint, dries hard. Works, you have to kind of work a little faster with that. And then there are fabric inks. And the fabric inks, of course you can go into any type of fabric. Most of them have to be heat set with an iron afterwards. Um, and there's all different types of colors you can use. You can use fabric inks on paper as well. The way I look at it is if I wanted something to print that I was going to put outside, like a stool or anything like that, I would want to use an acrylic ink. But if I was painting on, uh, using screen printing on paper, or if I was screen printing on uh, clay, clayboard, or if I was doing fabric, I could use uh, the fabric. Ink. Fabric ink is more universal than the acrylic. All right, so those are the inks. I have some here. These are happen to be the Jacquard print screen printing inks, but there's and they're all come in all different sizes. You use a quite a little bit of screen uh, ink, but you can reclaim it, so it goes a good little ways. Now, uh, that would be the stencil method. Now, if I wanted to do what I, uh, one of the things that we'll see is a screen filler and the drawing fluid method, I would need these two products, which is a drawing fluid, where you could actually trace something or do your own artwork on, on the screen and let it dry. And then you put a filler over it, and then you wash it out and be just like if you were burning a screen. So we will show you that method. And that's, that's two products that you need. That's very easy. If, you're, if you want to do something with children, this is great to do. If you want to just try and learn how to screen print and go through the ba basics, stencil method and the drawing, uh, drawing fluid and screen filler is really great. Screen filler is also used to repair your screen. If you should punch a hole in it or something like that, you can seal it up with a screen filler. Um, and then for uh, burning a screen, you need a lot more things. 
you need your screen, your image. Now your image has to be a, you do it on transparencies. You can print them right off of the computer, anything you want. You can uh, scan your artwork into the computer and then print it out on a, a transparency. The one thing you want to do, and I learned it the hard way sometimes, is that you want to make sure that you print two um, transparencies. And you want to put them together and, and just scotch tape them at the end. You want to match them just actually perfect. The reason you want to do that is because you want the light to go through it and you want a good strong image. So you have transparencies. They're easy to get at any uh, office store or uh, art supply store and you just print them. Other than that, you need, you, it would be great if you have a uh, piece of plexiglass to lay over it. Uh, when you're getting ready to burn the screen. If you don't, it works okay without it, but you c it's better with that. And then you need a light source. Now the light sources for this, this is a, uh, this is a photo flood light bulb. It's a 250 watt photo flood light bulb. And it has a pie pan around it. You're going to think I'm nuts, but this works best of anything that has ever been around to get the screen to burn just right. And so basically what it is is you take the light bulb and you just simply cut a hole in it, split it, put the light bulb around, put the uh, pie pan around it and then tape it and then you going to hang it from a, you plug it in and so forth so that you can use it to burn your image. Now you don't have to use a light bulb. If you're in a south or somewhere you have a lot of sun, you can also burn a screen in the sun just by putting it out in the sun. But these are our basic tools that you will need to um, do your screens. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tanya Hill. Look for my DVD on screen printing and the other free art lessons on the Jerry's website.